Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a picture-in-picture -picture hand tracking effect in Touch Designer. You can also change it up and get some interesting visuals that create a reaction diffusion effect by adding in a little bit of sharpening and some blur in this feedback loop that looks like this. I'm doing a challenge right now called January to create a piece of generative artwork every single day for 30 days of January. The current challenge is to create a Drost effect, which is essentially a picture in picture effect. So I thought it'd be fun to make a tutorial. To make this, go ahead and pop on over to github.com and search for mediapipe touch designer and you'll find this project created by Dom Scott and myself. You can go to the release section over here if you scroll down, there is a section that says release.zip. Go ahead and download that, unzip the project, open up the MediaPipe touch designer.to, and once it's open, you'll see a large network like this. All of the tracking is housed inside the MediaPipe component. So if you open up the parameters page, we don't need all of them turned on. So go ahead and turn off everything except for the hand tracking. You can select your webcam right here from this dropdown. And if it's working, you should see your hand tracking showing up in the frame. I'm going to go ahead and delete the helper files because we don't need them right now. So the only one that I'm going to keep around is this one called hand tracking. Now we want to be able to move our video frame around. So let's go ahead and connect a null to the final output here, which is going to be our video input. Place a fit top. In the comment section, set it to the parent panel size, fit it to fit outside. Since I'm filming this for mobile, I'm going to zoom out and go to the project and change the layout to 1080 by 1920. And now when we go back inside, we should see that our video is scaled correctly. OK, so what we want to do is place a transform so that way we can move our image around. And notice that we can translate this frame we can rotate it, we can scale it. So what we'll want to do is map this to our hand tracking. Notice there's a little bit of a transparent layer behind it. So what we'll do is composite our transform on top of our original video. Also, I'm going to place an out at the end of our network. So that way we can see our final output and I'll turn this background on. Go ahead and place a null chop on the third output of the hand tracking. And really what we want here is it's going to give us the distance between our pointer and our thumb. That's going to be the pinch midpoint. And then it'll give us the rotation between those. And we can use the distance between our pointer and thumb to scale the image up and down. So we really only want just the first hand. We don't want both hands. So what I'm going to do here is select and I'm going to get the H1 star to get all of those. Now we have the midpoint rotation distance. Let's place a null, put it in into an active mode, and then I'm going to drag and drop the midpoint X onto the translate. I'm going to place the midpoint Y onto the translate Y. We can see that it's moving around. And notice that it's too far to the right. So what we want to do is subtract off 0.5 on both of them. Now it's moving it to the correct location. And let's go ahead and scale it up and down based off of the pinch distance. So I'm going to drag and drop the pinch distance onto the text scale, paste that as a reference. We can scale it up and down. OK, last part is our rotation. So I'm going to pass our rotation. It's rotated too far to the right. I don't want to hold my hand like this. So I think we're going to need to add 90. There we go. OK, so the last thing that we need to do here is add in the effect of the actual picture in the picture, right? Because right now we have one single frame. 
So the simple way to do that is to add in a feedback network. So what we're going to do is right click on the wire between our fit and transform and insert a feedback. And then now we want to take this over and drag and drop it onto the feedback. And what we should see is this infinite tunnel effect. There we go. So that final part for the reaction diffusion is a very simple process. What we can do is add in a blur. And if you go into the palette under image filters, scroll down, take sharpen, drag that on. This is a little sharpening image filter. We'll make a little space. Insert this between your blur and your transform and go ahead and crank it up to one. And now we get our reaction diffusion effect. The hand tracking is a little finicky when your hand fills the entire frame. So let's scale up our transform a little bit. Go to our scale and multiply it by 1.2 times 1.2. That way our hand is still in the frame when it scales up large. The other thing you can do is if you want larger shapes, take your blur, increase your blur size, and try changing this on the fly. So notice if we bring our blur all the way up, it starts to cancel out the effect to the point where it almost disappears. And then we can kind of bring it back in. Thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you enjoy this type of content, consider checking out my YouTube channel where I've got a number of other tutorials as well. Thanks, bye.